Okay, let's go ahead and get started. It's one o'clock. And uh, I first off want to thank you all for coming to this session. I appreciate your presence today and welcome. My name is Dr. Nicholas Plants, and I'm going to share my screen here in a moment. And I am the um, General Studies Academic Coordinator here at the college, which is a brand new position. And one of the things that I wanna to do today is I wanna talk with you about this new position and the committee that has been formed to help me in my job. And my job is to oversee the usual administration of the General Studies program. And uh, this is something that is new. As I mentioned, this has not been a position before. It's kind of been an orphan at the college for a long time. So this position was created and just started this semester. And um, in order to support me, a committee was created and some of those committee members are here today and I'd like to just mention who they are and thank them in advance for being here. So I've got a committee of five others in addition to myself and from humanities, English and social sciences, uh, Jeff Snodgrass is the representative and from science, technology, engineering and math, Fariba Rusby is the representative. Health, wellness and hospitality is represented by Cindy Gossage. Professional studies and community education is represented by uh, Judy Malusa and student services uh, professional advisor is Karen Burks. And uh, just give me one second, please. I need to check in with the chat and make sure or the participants and make sure that everybody is in. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, this is a new position and one of the things, there's two main things I'd like to do today. I'd like to one, give you an overview of what we've been working on. And as I do so, please keep in mind that uh, what I'm sharing with you today is preliminary. We've only had four meetings so far, so we're just getting our feet wet as well. And I thought it would be a good idea to share with you what we've learned so far, but our work is not anywhere near uh, done and we've got a lot more to learn. So treat everything today as preliminary. The second aspect of what I wanted to do today was to get your feedback and your thoughts, no matter what your role at the college is, if you have any exposure with general studies, then uh, we value your experience and we would love to hear from you after I've provided an overview, if there are issues that you are aware of or concerns or things that are making it difficult for our students to succeed in general studies, I would certainly like to get your feedback today and to hear from you. So uh, we kind of have a two pronged approach and I wanna do uh, both of those things. So you should see on your screen a uh, part of the catalog and these are the Associate of Arts degrees. Can anybody, everybody see that on the screen? Yep. Yep. Yes, okay. that's good. Okay. So this is taken directly from the catalog and uh, this is where they divide the different programs of study. And so we're talking today about transfer programs and we're talking specifically about the general studies programs. And as you see listed here, we have a very large amount of general studies programs. These are all AA degrees. And uh, the first one listed is the general general studies degree. And then you see 19 concentrations. One of the reasons why my position was created and why the committee was established is because these degrees are proliferating. We have more of them now than I think we've ever had before. And it's important for us to have a good, clear understanding of these degrees and how they relate to each other and how they serve our students. So if you look at this list, one thing that you may not realize, and this is one of the concerns that we are facing, is that this list is not really organized in a very helpful manner. If you look at this list, you would not realize, for example, that we're talking about three different kinds of degrees. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, you see that the general studies AA is different from the other 19, because whereas the other 19 have concentrations, the AA general studies degree does not. But there are some other differences that you can't easily glean from this list. And one of them is that 
four of these concentrations are different from the other 15. If you take a look here, we have concentrations in specific areas like art, biology, chemistry, communications, criminal justice, economics, and you keep going down. But then when you get to the general studies AA with a concentration in health sciences, that is actually an umbrella degree, by which I mean that is not tied to a specific department or a specific discipline. That is serving the health area in general. Okay, so that's kind of an umbrella degree, which is bigger than these more specific ones. Uh, the concentration in liberal and creative arts is another example of that. That is an umbrella degree that is serving a larger group than just an individual department or area uh, a subject. Another example of that is when you move down here and you get to the sciences, engineering, and math. Okay, and the fourth one is social sciences. All of these are kind of roughly aligned with our divisions. And so these four, again, social sciences, sciences, engineering, and math, health sciences, and liberal and creative arts are different in that they are larger umbrella degrees not tied to specific departments or specific subjects. And that's something that you would have a hard time telling if you just look at this list in the way that it's currently listed now. So that's one of the concerns that the committee has, and that's one of the things that we want to work on is we want to work on the organization and the structure of these 20 degrees so that our students and our advisors and everybody can understand these better. I'll share with you uh, just recently this came up and one of my responsibilities in this position is to uh, attend the academic council and last meeting of the academic council we had a student come and speak about her concerns about general studies. And it was clear on the basis of her feedback that she really didn't understand the differences between these degrees very well. So that was very helpful for me to hear because it confirmed one of the things that uh, I was told and that I thought entering into this position, which was that these are not broadly very well understood by people. And that's not just students. I know I'm using a student as an example, but it's not just students. I think a lot of people don't understand the differences between these degrees very well, and that's concerning to us. Another thing to be aware of is that there is a difference, a big difference between the general studies degree and the other 19. And that is that the general studies degree doesn't have an area of concentration. Well, what does that practically mean? What that means is that when you are a general, general studies student, above and beyond your required general education requirements, and please note that for all 20 of these degrees, they all share the same number of general education requirements. For all of these AA degrees, students are required to take 31 credits of general education. They're also required to take the PASS course. So if you put that together, you're talking about 32 credits, okay? And that what that means is that after students get done with their PASS requirement and with their general education requirements, they have 28 credits left. In the general studies degree, those 28 credits are not specified. They can be in anything. That's one difference between the general studies degree and the other 19. The other 19 area of concentration degrees all have 15 specified requirements within that area. So if you are a general studies AA with an area of concentration in art, for example, you have to do your 31 gen ed credits plus your past credit, so that's 32. Then of your remaining 28 credits, 15 of those credits are specified within art. But when you're in the general studies, because there is no concentration there, those 28 credits are not specified. Now, it is certainly the case that advisors try to encourage students to identify what their areas of interest are for transfer. So hopefully those students are taking courses in their specific area of interest, but there is no requirement that they do so. They're encouraged to do so, and I have no doubt that our advisors work with our students to do that, but at the end of the day, they have to get 28 credits, and those 28 credits may be in a wide variety of areas. 
So that's one very important difference to be aware of with the general studies AA, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more once I continue with my overview. Is all of this making sense so far? Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to jump in, okay? I'm more than happy to work with your questions as we go ahead. If you do have questions or concerns that pop up as I'm going through this, please speak up and let me know. I want this to be collaborative and I want us to work together. So I want to give you the overview, but I'm more than happy to have you jump in here at any point. Okay, so give me one second and I wanna give you some numbers on these 20 degrees, okay? I'm gonna switch over for a second and I've got some data here on enrollment in these degrees. And one second, I will have that up for you. Okay, can you see this spreadsheet, this Excel sheet? Yes, but it's tiny, 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 tiny. Okay, I don't have any way to make it bigger. I just made it as big as I can. Anybody have any suggestions? So, so Nick, it started out big and then it got small. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, okay. But it started off and we were able to see it. Did yeah, like that. Yeah. Love that. Okay. <laughs> you see thank the you. zoom in the bottom right corner too. You can also it. make it bigger through that. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's too big. Oh, it's getting smaller. Well, oh, now something happened. Yeah. Oh. So I think you just need to scroll it left. There you, there go. you go. Okay. There you go. Right Thank there. you. Okay. So what you see here is some data, and I think Nassim is here, and she might be able to answer if you have uh, real specific data questions. But what you see here is data from the fall semesters of 2017, 2018, 2019, and this fall of students who are enrolled in these 20 degrees. So if you take a look here, one thing that you want to notice is that the Gen Gen, that is the general general studies degree, is one of the biggest ones. Uh, although there is a definite trend downwards here, pretty significant actually, but you can see that one here. Another one to be aware of, and again, if anybody has anything to elaborate on from what I'm saying, please feel free. Uh, if you look at the health sciences one now, for those of you who have been here for a little while, you might be aware of what happened there. That area uh, subsumed all of the uh, formerly called uh, nurse, what was it, nurse petitioners, right? And all of those students went into this degree. So you don't see anything here for 17 or 18 because they hadn't put those students in there. It looks like they put them in starting in the fall of 19 and now they're in there. And that is the single biggest uh, one of these. Now, remember that's one of the four umbrella degrees that I talked about, right? The four umbrella degrees again are the health sciences one, this one that's right. Can you guys see my cursor? doesn't matter. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's this one here. But then notice with the other three umbrella degrees, and those are liberal and creative arts, we've got one student in that degree. And then we've got the SEM degree, and we've got six students there. And then we have the social science degree, and we have eight students there. Okay. So in these four umbrella degrees, apart from the health science one, which is very big, obviously, and which is a result of having transitioned the students in there, with the exception of that one, these other umbrella degrees are very, very low enrollment. And that's one thing that I think we need to pay attention to and think about as we move forward. Again, my concern is to focus on the structure and the organization of these degrees and also how they relate to each other. And at this point, it looks like those umbrella degrees, with the exception of health science degree, are very, very low enrollment. And I suspect that that's in part because students perhaps don't really understand what those degrees are, how they differ from the other ones. And they might be fearful that they don't really know what they can do with that degree. They might be clear on, on, on the other degrees, and that might account for some of the different numbers. Nick, could I add just a point of clarification? Yes. Um, whenever you throw numbers up, of course, we have to be a little bit more precise. Okay. So the health sciences, uh, general, general studies degree 
didn't only subsume nursing petitioners, but all allied health petitioner programs were subsumed into this health sciences. So I wanted to just provide that additional clarity. So it's Thank nursing plus all allied health. I appreciate that. Thank you. That is a, a big one here. And uh, so that makes sense. It's capturing all of those people. Okay. Any questions about these enrollment numbers so far? Initial thoughts, hypotheses, musings, wonderings? Well, uh, hi, Nick. It's Dennis. I, hi, Dennis. Uh, I, um, you know, I've been working on getting programs that can be offered at UTC, and you and I have talked. And one of the things that I notice, and I don't know for what it's worth, is that the first year, for example, of the sociology and psychology and the social sciences program, the first year is essentially identical, uh, which I kind of like in that um, students who don't necessarily know what they're doing might think they're psychology majors um, as they go through their first year and learn more about what because they have to take both a sociology class and a psychology class uh, early on. Um, it just feels like it's a nice way for them to kind of find their way um, over the course of their first year of studies. I, um, and, and so I've thrown that um, social sciences one in as, a, as one to make available at UTC. Um, I certainly hope it doesn't just get whatever, 10% of those six students. But um, um, uh, that's part of my thinking is that it's a nice place to be for people who are finding their way in that whole broad field. Okay, so Dennis, I'm sorry, are you talking about the social sciences one in particular or the sociology one? Well, all, all three of them actually, but so the social sciences one, um, you can go through the first year of recommended courses for that program and basically it's also the courses you've taken have also set you up to either go into sociology or psychology you know it's a nice place to sort of find your way is what I'm saying okay and is your sense Dennis thank you is your sense that the differences between the more specific sociology degree and the more umbrella social sciences degree is your, is your perception that those differences are understood by students and advisors and other people or not as much? Um, I, don't, I don't have a sense one way or the other. I think it's, it's new for us, and I, but I, I'm, I'm not a, an advisor. I, um, I, I just know that psychology is like a big sort of default major for kids. And, um, they may or may not really want to do that, but the, the um, so and this would give a little flexibility for people who might want to change their minds or as instruct as they talk through where what they're really fired up about with their teachers, you know they they they're in the right category. Okay, I'm just asking Dennis because my my suspicion and I'm I would be happy to be proven wrong, but my suspicion is that because the umbrella degrees are not really distinguished from the more specific ones, that it would be very easy for people to be confused, you know, to look at that list and to be handed 20 options and to see social sciences and then to see sociology. My suspicion right. is that not everybody is, you know, really clear on that difference. And I don't have a problem with those degrees. I just think that we need to do a better job of making it clear to everybody what those differences are. So if you're a student who uh, thinks that you might be interested in social science in some way, shape or form, then you would probably wanna start in the umbrella degree. And then you might eventually, like you said, move into either the sociology or even the psychology degree. But if those differences are not really well understood, my fear is that part of the reason the numbers are so low in the umbrella degrees is not necessarily because people are opposed to them, but more so simply because they don't understand what the differences are. Right. I, I, I think um, I like the idea of thinking about, you know, when we were talking more than I think we are now about pathways, 
Um, I sort of liked the idea of those umbrella degrees as being the trailhead. And then um, as they, so they're sort of saying, well, well, I want to do mountains or I want to do river valley, you know, but then they can differentiate later on as they move down that particular big path that appealed to them, then they can really pick their specific uh, trail that they want to continue on down. I, I, I wish we somehow, I don't feel like we've really captured the metaphors for students and the images and the kind of, you know, how we want you to find your way in life um, quite quite as well as, as we could. Um, but that the, my thinking is, well, that's one of the pathways that we put out there. So it makes sense if you're sort of generically interested in this kind of thing, then you go to that trailhead. Um, and But we I don't know how we're gonna move forward with marketing those things, but um, that's sort of how I've justified it in my mind. Right. Well, I appreciate the metaphor, and I think it's a helpful one, Dennis. I think the thing that I'm interested in, in addition to that, is also, you know, funneling students into their area of interests better than we currently do. So if you take a student who starts as the general general studies, and throughout you're encouraging them to zero in on their interests, moving from the general studies to one of the four umbrella degrees is kind of a good initial step, right? You're not saying, oh, I wanna do art or psychology yet. You're saying, I wanna do something I think in STEM or something in liberal and creative arts or social sciences. And then the student might decide, no, I really am interested in sociology or I really am interested in psychology. And we can accommodate that with the structure that we have, right? The issue is, do they understand that structure and do they understand that movement towards something more specific? And my fear is the way that it's currently set up, those relationships are not really clear yet. So part of what we've been working on is not so much a change in structure as it is a change in presentation, right? How do we present these so that people understand that the idea is we want to move them towards more specific degrees, or at least towards the, the degree with the specificity that they're most comfortable with. Maybe they, they don't wanna decide their specific one right away, and we've got a degree for that, but maybe they do. And then we've got a degree for that as well, or maybe they really do wanna be a general studies student. We've got the degree for that as well, right? So you wanna, you wanna have that broad swath I have no problem with the broad swath. My issue is rather for people who are trying to navigate that swath, do they understand the various waypoints along the trail? So, so Nick, this is Calvin. So yeah. question, uh, so are you, is your team envisioning um, a, a concept map of sorts so that when they look at the web, you, I, cause I can see what you're saying. So you're saying that well, you could be a general studies, let's say on the STEM side. So if you come in in general studies and you could start into general studies, but you could also look at the, um, the science, engineering and math pathway, or you could then deviate into the biology or the chemistry. So are you saying that on the website, then that's how it should look so students can see, you know, you could start off with general studies, but if you decide to navigate to a different place, we visually show that as opposed to just having a list of, tw of 20 programs. Is that, is that? That's exactly right, Calvin. Okay, that's okay. That's exactly right. And think, think about how helpful that would be, right? Oh, I, mean, I, I totally, I see that because from a visual perspective, it would be very easy to see that, but I have to look through this long list because from the list, you're absolutely right. You can't really tell where you can go. And I didn't even know one of those was an umbrella program, but now that I do, thank you for that. The other part was I was going to say is now that we have moved really backwards away from the faculty advising, um, the, the training that professional advisors receive on these programs is really paramount. And are you also saying that they're not getting the, the training that they need on these programs as well? Well, they need I, to I, I, mean, I, I don't know that to be the case, Calvin, and, and I, right. I wouldn't want to say that. But my suspicion is, because of how this is presented, okay. my suspicion is that it's not only students who don't okay, understand right, right. these nuances. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, in, yeah. any, in any specific case, right. uh, I have no doubt that advisors probably do understand these nuances much better. But you can see 
sure. just on the basis of, you know, if you if you take the old adage that an advisor is only as good as the catalog that they're advising from, you can see that if this is what you're handed, right, right that, you know, and that's why your point about the visual, I, that's exactly the, the, the way that we're thinking okay. is, okay, let's, you know, let's sell this strong point. If our strong point is that we have three different kinds of general studies degrees, right, and that they can meet you as a student wherever you are, whether you're at the point of not having any idea of what you want to do, or you're at the point of having an idea within the four broad divisions, what you want to do, or right. within a department, what you want to do, well, then let's, you know, let's take advantage of that. And let's show the relationships between these things so that, you know, you can see what it is, you know, this is not yeah. visual at all. Yeah, right? I would I totally mean, appreciate that myself. And yeah. I would totally appreciate that. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's, you know, that's one of the big things that we've yeah. come to on the committee so far mm -hmm. is that this is not necessarily a structural idea, so a problem, so much as it is a presentation problem, at least at this point. Gotcha. Makes okay. Sense. Thank Nick, you. Nick, I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Lindsay. Um, might there also be the possibility of, you know, changing the name so that not everything's a concentration in general studies? You know, at one point we did have a biology degree, a psychology degree, and that's the true, you know, that name of that degree so that you would have a general studies, maybe a general studies as this umbrella one, the four, and then actual degrees in the fields. And that would help clarify that there are different levels and different, a different structure. Uh, so, sorry, Calvin. I was gonna ask that, did we have that before? I mean, I got here in 2017 and it seems like yes. I heard some conversation about we had that before yes. and there was some rationale for moving to, I don't know, it was an MHEC to a concentration. I mean, that's, that's correct. And I think Lindsay's also correct that we don't necessarily need to call these area of concentration. That is okay. the terminology that MHEC uses. And by the way, this is something that a, a lot of people don't necessarily know. According to MHEC, in order to have a concentration, you only need to have 12 credits. If I'm not mistaken, I think almost all of these concentration degrees have 15. And I'm not opposed to 15, and I'm not suggesting that we move away from 15, but I do think it's helpful for people to know that in terms of having a concentration, 12 is required, not 15. If we as an institution have decided that we think 15 should be the minimum, then that would be fine. And I'm not suggesting that that necessarily be changed, but it is a decision that we have made in terms of these degrees. And I'm just not sure of how intentional a decision that was. Perhaps it was intentional. Perhaps we said 12 is not enough. We want 15 in these things and that's fine. Um, having done some research on other schools, some, a lot of other schools do use 15, but other schools use 12. Uh, to come back to your point, Lindsay, I think that the way in which we name these things is important. And I do think that if we, you know, came up with some language or we came up with a structure along the lines of what Calvin is suggesting that made it clear to students, I don't know that we would have to label each one of these area of concentration. I think you're potentially right about that, right? We could have some places call them core. Um, some places call them uh, focus. Um, you know, there's different language that we could use. Now, I do think as soon as you start changing the official names in terms of the catalog, that does require MHEC proposals and you have to make changes that way. So that could be a more cumbersome and long-term process. But that is, you know, that is certainly something, Lindsay, that we could look into in addition to the uh, structure. And uh, let me take a break here for one second. Cindy, are you still with us? Cindy, are you there? Cindy was going to share some data with us on transfer. Let me take a look and see if she's still with us here. Cindy, can you hear me? Nick, Nick, I'm sorry. I'm here. I couldn't find okay. my unmute. <laughs> okay. Um, 
You need to allow me to share the screen. Okay, and give me a second here. Do you know where I do that, Cindy? Um, no, I've never been a host in a Zoom call. I only do Blackboard Collaborate. <laughs> so if you got the so you should be able to go under participants. Okay. And then click on her and to the right, you'll see like three dots and it should say make co-host or something to that effect. Or you can also allow participants to share screen. I'm going to do allow participants to share screen. Nick, it looks like you have um, a colleague from CET, the technology uh, technician, in the room with you. Yes, I've made her a co-host already. Oh, Thank okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So oh. you should be able to share, Cindy. I'm still getting the error message that says host disabled participant screen sharing. Cindy, weren't you on, on two devices? So yes. may, maybe the, the one device will share, but the other won't. Oh, so um, CET technician person, could you switch the sharing away from Cynthia to Cynthia Gossage? That's the, the computer is Cynthia Gossage. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, technology everyone. angel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yep, we yes. can now. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and this is really just by way of context and we've only barely scraped the surface of trying to look at this data. This is from a huge data set that Karen got. And my apologies, Karen, I don't remember where it's from. Although I think it's from M. Heck, can you confirm that? I'm not sure if Karen is here. Okay, well, it kind of doesn't matter. It's a big data set, um, and and so it, I've got us in green. On the left of the screen, you see absolute numbers of transfers from Montgomery, CCBC, Anne Arundel, us, Howard, and the College of Southern Maryland, and because that's really not a fair comparison because of enrollment differences. On the right, you have it normalized um, where I took the number of transfers and divided by total enrollment. And um, I, I think this is really important because if we're talking about general studies degrees and those are obviously meant as transfer degrees, it's possible that we're not doing something right it's possible. I'm not suggesting that's for sure. Um, do you guys want to ask me any questions about this? Yes, yeah, Cynthia, I just make sure I'm clear. So the screen on the slide, this is the number percentage of transfers in general studies or all programs? No, that's the problem. It's total. Um, and yeah. it's, it's a very long process to try to break it down according to the, the data set that we have been given. Okay. And we need, we're still trying to work with records office to understand it. Okay. Gotcha. But, yeah, this I is total. Add if this is truly the USM data set, then it mm -hmm. is transfers into any uh, college or university in the University System of Maryland. But we Correct. also have students who go elsewhere, and Correct. the National Student Clearinghouse is a better source uh, for that because um, we could also take a look at if our students are transferring to other two-year institutions when we look at that data set. So if you are going to try to compare these numbers with the definitions the college uses and publishes from the research office, they will not match for those reasons. Okay. Okay, I have, go ahead. I have a question. Um, and this sort of relates to the many, many different presentations we've heard of the doom and gloom of the PGCC well, graduation Right, and again, transfers, are we calling that the same as graduation? I, you know, how that word is being used. And when I look at the chart on the, the information on the right, that we're at the 8% and 8% for CCBC, but M, uh, Montgomery College is only at 11%. 
Actually, that's Howard that 11, Montgomery's only a 10. Oh, all right. Okay, so I got my, my C's mixed up there. Um, I don't look at this and get the same sense of doom and gloom that, oh my gosh, we're in the gutter compared to other schools in the state. Um, so I guess in terms of you know transfer, graduation, where they're going, whether it's the state system, system whether it's any other college, I, you know, somewhere there needs to be some other, I don't know, other details to help me understand, you know, the, the serious worry that we have about our graduation rate when, if this matches other schools, then I think there may be other questions. Um, oh. So Lindsay, Lindsay, if no I could doubt. help just a little bit, um, the definitions really matter when we're talking absolutely. about this. Absolutely, absolutely. Because when we're talking as a college, of tracking a cohort for a certain period of time, a certain cohort of our students for a certain period of time, let's say uh, on-time graduation or a two-year graduation period, um, those definitions track our students and then graduation is graduation. Transfer right, right. means to leave without completing the degree. Okay. And then we also do a combined rate. Okay, so this is about students ask, that did not graduate. We also look at those who continue to be enrolled. So we, we slice it in a variety of different ways to understand that cohort. What I would ask of the whoever ran this um, is if you're getting it from the USM database, is it appropriate to make the denominator headcount of our students? Because if it's the USM database, it's the percentage of their, it's, it's what headcount of their students they're receiving from us, not Nassim, the percentage of our students that they're receiving. Now, see, Mrs. Cindy, that is not my understanding of how, where this is coming from. Okay. This is looking at transfers from Maryland community colleges to UM system schools. Okay, so transfers, <laughs> not graduates. Well, let me, let me just back yeah. up because Nassim, you just said something that I want to make sure I understand. Transfer doesn't, it necessarily excludes graduates who transfer? For, us, for our definition. Now, if a student, so this is where, we, like, the, again, the nuance of the definition really matters because if from the USM perspective, they're not interested in whether you come to us prior to graduate, come to them, let's say Bowie or College Park. If College Park is not interested or disaggregates the data by whether or not you actually received a credential from that community college, they're just saying, did you come and whether you did or did not receive the credential is irrelevant, you still transferred. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know that because it, it really does change the perspective of the data in terms of comparing these numbers. And I think this I'm, I'm responding to, I believe Lindsay's comment around it. Um, the numbers essentially don't match the other presentations that we have because the college, we care whether or not you get a credential from us. And so we do disaggregate based on that variable. And this is where maybe um, Nick and others on the committee, it would be helpful to have uh, touch points with the research team so that if there is comparable data or data we want to put side by side to say from USM's perspectives, here's what we see from PGCC numbers, here's what we see, here's why the differences occur. Um, and it might be a good um, next set of steps as you all do this data analysis that we connect so that we can connect dots for people because they are going to see lots of data using the same words, but those words have different definitions in different contexts. Well, certainly any help you can get for us to get that information would be helpful. Sure, and I actually believe we have members of the research team on the call. And so I believe Shari maybe is on the call and she can also take that back to the team. Yes, okay. and actually I'm, I'm taking notes as you all are talking about this. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Shari. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Cindy, uh, unfortunately, we've only got about 10 minutes left and I want to share just a couple other things. Okay. Uh, could, you, could you move uh, kind of quickly through what yeah. you have left, please? This, this is the only other thing I was going to show you guys. Okay. And this is coming from the same database, so apologies if it is um, not complete. Um, but we were looking at this just to try to understand 
if we have limited resources, and since we're talking about transfer degrees, where should we be looking most carefully or most closely, or where should we start? No surprise, UMGC, UM, UM used to be UM, what did they used to be? UMUC, UC. right? Gets the lion's share. Um, and these are by years. Bowie gets the next, College Park gets the next, and everybody else is kind of just way down there at the bottom. And Nick, I can turn it back over. Okay, thank you so much, Cindy, I appreciate it. Sure. With the time we have left, I'd like to just share uh, some of the things that we found at other schools in terms of how they go ahead and structure their general studies programs. And uh, I'm not presenting these as this is what someplace else does, therefore this is what we need to do, but rather just to give us some ideas. And Calvin, this will touch upon your point about the visual presentation of these degrees. And I think the organization helps. So let me just give you a couple quick examples because I want to give people some time here at the end. Uh, if you take a look, for example, this is Montgomery, okay? So at Montgomery, you've got three different areas you can choose from. Humanities, arts, communication, and languages, science, technology, engineering, and math, social science. So these are their three areas. Now, once you click on one of these areas, you can drill down, Calvin, into some of the more specific things. The benefit of having it set up like this is, this is a lot more wieldy than the 19, right? I mean, sure. there's, there's, there's organization here. There's one other thing I wanted to point out about Montgomery that's interesting. So they've got these three areas. They also, you see here, have an integrated studies core, which allows a student to combine two of these areas, okay? That's kind of an interesting thing. So if you're not sure, they allow you to take two of these and combine them into a degree. And the final thing is, and they're obviously focused on these three, but the truth of the matter is they do have a general studies undecided degree, which would be similar to our general general studies. But notice here, you must select a core, one of these four, three plus the integrated, you must select one of these cores before you get to 30 credits. That's very different than what we have. Mm -hmm. So what Montgomery is telling their students is you can start in general general studies, but by the time you get to 30 credits, you're gonna be in one of these four areas. I mentioned that Calvin, because that aligns with what I said earlier about this funnel approach they're clearly trying to take as many students as they can and funnel them into one of these four areas. I'm not necessarily suggesting that that's the way that we wanna go, but it's good to see different forms of organization here. That gives us some insight. And I think this is a form of presentation that's helpful, at least in terms of the visuals and getting a bigger understanding overall. Since we're running short of time, let me just give you one more example. I have several, but I am running out of time here. I'm gonna switch over to CCBC, which is one of the colleges, sister colleges we've been looking at. When we started this, uh, Nassim suggested that we look at Montgomery, Howard, CCBC, College of Southern Maryland, and Anne Arundel. And this is CCBC, and I just wanted to show this to you because it's interesting. They actually have turned general studies into one of their pathways. Okay, that's another way to go here. You can turn it into one of your pathways. And if you take a look here and you drill down and you go into general studies, they have Associate of Arts in general studies. And then you drill down. And then what you find here, and these are the gen ed requirements, but what you find here, and this ties into Lindsay's point about nomenclature, here they don't call it area of concentration, they call it area of engagement. Now, unfortunately, this uh, website only shows us for the first semester, but these are the tracks that they have. So remember, this is a general studies degree, they call it a pathway, and then within this pathway, they've got undecided arts, humanities and social science, technology, engineering and math, business education and law and science and health. 
So they start big, Calvin, and they've got general studies as their overarching idea. And then when you drill down, you get into several different tracks. Okay. So if you take these two things, one thing that we can learn is that we could take our 20 degrees and we could organize them in a way similar to this or similar to Montgomery, where we have a general studies degree at the top, but then we divide the remaining 19 into our four umbrella areas. And with each in each of those four umbrella areas, then we have the specific degrees by department. That would be a different way of organizing it where students would kind of start big and then drill down based on which of the four areas they have an interest in. They could stop at the umbrella level and just get a degree in general studies in, for example, liberal and creative arts, or they could drill down further and get their general studies degree in art or any of the other ones that we saw on our list. The benefit of that, Calvin, is you would start, like you said, at the top, and then you would drill down, and students would see that everywhere along that path, they have options. They can just stick with general studies, they can go to the umbrella degree, or if they've decided now they really want to do sociology, to go back to Dennis's point, they could drill down one step further. I'm sorry that took longer than I expected, guys. We don't have a lot of time, but if there are other questions and thoughts, I would love to get them now. Uh, Nick, I just have a, the question is about, so where is the committee, so what is the committee's next step on this? I mean, getting feedback from us and then your next step within the next year is to start moving toward this or semester? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a specific timeline, Calvin, mm -hmm. but what I want to do, we're still in the research phase right now. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at these sister schools. And then I was asked to also look at some of the pathway schools from the cohort that we were in, in different states and across the country to look at how they structured this. So right. that's kind of the next step. But then once we've gone through those research steps and once with help from Nassim and Ray, we've gotten a better grasp on the transfer information, then our job will be to put forth a proposal about how we would like to organize these and present them. Yeah, I would like to say I really um, like and appreciate the visual representation because that representation in and of itself answers many questions that you have about some of the programs, so great job. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to add to that if I can, um, that uh, I, I think it's very important that we look at this from the perspective of the transfer institutions too. One of the things, uh, and I'm not gonna go through it all now because we don't have time, but Nick and I have talked about this a lot. I don't know that the University of Maryland sees the difference between general studies AA and general studies English AA, right? I don't, I don't know that they see a difference between those two things. So if we change the representation to go with what Calvin was just talking about, I think it helps a lot of people out and just trying to figure out their way through the world. If instead of thinking that they have a very specific thing that, oh, that's doing these specific things, we say, no, it's, it's a general thing. Eventually you're gonna get to a specific thing but you're probably not really getting a lot of that with us. And I think that would help end a lot of the confusion if we didn't have these differently listed things, but looked at it from the perspective of where we're transferring to, what do they want out of our general studies degrees and of our students when they've done their time here and gotten to there? a good yeah. point, Dan. Thank you. And one of the things that we have discovered, and I didn't have time to get in this today as much as I would have liked to, but one of the reasons why many of our students end up in general studies, even if they already do have an idea of what their interest is, is because the general studies degree, the general general studies, gives them the greatest flexibility in terms of how many credits they can transfer into us and how many credits they can transfer to where they're going. So this is another piece of the puzzle that we have to keep in mind is that students are looking to the general general studies degree in part 
because it enables them in many cases to transfer more credits into us and out from us than these other degrees do because they don't have the area of concentration. That's, and that's what you're saying, Dan. I mean, if it's the case that these students are transferring to wherever, University of Maryland, and they're doing it in general studies because that gives them the most flexibility to transfer the most credits, that's going to be a reason why maybe we don't see many people in the umbrella degrees, right? I mean, Nick, that's- as an advisor, that's, I used to general studies. I like the gen, the gen gen because it does allow that flexibility, especially when a student is maybe getting 14 credits of AP credit, which is time and money that they have saved almost an entire semester um, by getting AP credits. And there's going to be more room to find a place to put all those AP credits in a gen gen degree. And also, uh, um, Dan, like you mentioned, I'm always working backwards. It's like, where do you, where does that student want to go? And what does that for your school want? And if it doesn't exactly 100% match a PGCC degree, I have the gen gen degree as flexibility to sort of create and maybe move things around or get them the classes that they need to move forward and be as strong as possible when they get to the four-year school. Thanks, Lindsay. I don't, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, so we're already a couple minutes over and I want to thank you very much today, everybody for attending. Uh, sorry about the technological snafus and uh, being a little bit rushed, but I think that what you see here today gives you a good idea at least of what we're up to so far. And again, if you have any thoughts or questions or experience that you want to share with us, please don't be shy. You can get in touch with me. And let me remind you again of the other members of the committee, Jeff Snodgrass from Hess, Fariba Rusby from STEM, Cindy Gossage from Health, Wellness, and Hospitality, Judy Malusa from Professional Studies and Community Education, and Karen Burks from Advising. They will all be happy to talk with you, and they would be happy to hear your experiences. And as I mentioned to Calvin, this is preliminary work. We don't have a hard and fast deadline, but Calvin, I would like to try to move forward with a proposal sooner rather than later, at least in terms of the presentation issue. I think we really need to work on how this is being presented. Uh, if we also have further structural and relationship questions in terms of how these different ones relate to each other, we need to do that as well. But in the short term, I really do think that uh, people would be benefited immediately by having a uh, presentable structure that would be clearer than what we currently have. So that's kind of the big issue on my radar anyway right now. So thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate your participation. I hope you found something useful here today. And again, please share your thoughts and questions with the committee. We're more than happy to talk with you further. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. So Nick, I can connect you um, in terms of the visualization. So Andrea Wheeler manages Acalog, and Acalog is uh, what you were in, right? The catalog.pdcc.edu is actually Acalog. Um, and so how it's presented there is very much in Andrea Wheeler's wheelhouse. However, communications and marketing has a very strong collaboration with uh, her and her team uh, to get those kinds of uh, design elements uh, formatted and put into Acalog. Um, so I'm happy to connect you with that team as well. Um, everything you see on the website in Program Finder is actually a direct pulling from Acalog. So we need to um, fix that as the source before we can change kind of the visualization and organization on the website. But again, that's Thank also you. my team. So I think, I think for now, we'll continue to be married at the hip on this one. Um, with us as support while you figure out content and, you know, the right direction. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Nassim. I appreciate no it. No problem. Yeah, um, I look forward to continuing to collaborate on this. Okay. Well, I think, right. you know, the good news is in the short term, I think anything we can do to organize it better will pay immediate dividends because, you know, it, it's a lot to expect somebody to take a look at what we currently have and kind of figure all that out on their own. So, sure. 
you know, I, I'm kind of looking at it as anything that we can do would be helpful. Um, and yeah, it did um, strike me as you were showing the enrollment data that it would be interesting to really find out whether we want those division specific umbrellas if the only one is health sciences that really has anybody in it of, of enough magnitude and maybe um, general general studies serves as the funnel point into the more specific ones. Um, and then the health studies is really around, or the health sciences one is really around, um, you know, continue the funnel into the more uh, application-based selective allied health programs for which petitioner was the previous solution. Um, yeah, but that, again, it, it's about organizing the content and figuring out whether those umbrellas really still need to exist or does general general studies serve in that umbrella capacity? Yeah, I mean, I, I can see it both ways. Uh, on the one hand, I think having those umbrella degrees could potentially be beneficial just in terms of salesmanship, you know, to say, wherever you are on this path, we can meet your needs. But I also agree with you that if we find that the general general studies provides the most flexibility and the remainder of the students are going to go into something really specific because they already know what they want to study, then you know it might just be the case that the umbrellas are not really serving a purpose. And if they're not serving a purpose, then you know I don't I don't want to have them. Um, sure. You know, because okay. I mean the other ones, I think the numbers were one, six, and eight. Yeah. You know, so um, and you know it's a chicken and egg kind of problem, right? I mean, is it are the are the numbers what they are because people don't understand what they are? Yeah. Or are they what they are because people either want maximum flexibility or they're willing to, you know, bite the bullet and get as specific as possible? I mean, it could be both of those things, right? Sure. It might yeah. not be either one. So, okay. but I think, you know, the good news is that with some organization, I think that we can at least begin to clarify some of these potential confusions. And, you know, I think Calvin's point is really important, right? That if a student can visualize it, that can really help them to kind of figure out where they belong on that map. And right now, my guess is they don't, they just don't feel that, you know, because they, they don't see kind of the whole, you know? Yeah, uh, understood. Okay, well, okay. Um, you know, great work. I mean, you guys have already um, organized and talked about the information enough that it was presented very clearly. And I think it's gonna help continue to engage people in the thinking alongside you. So uh, congratulations to you and to the committee. Thanks a lot. I appreciate right, your help thanks, as Nick. always. Appreciate no it. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Hi, Nick, it's Shari from Ray. I just wanted to jump in and say, as I said, I was taking some notes and I'm gonna report back to the team what some of the initial data needs you know, will be. Okay. And whenever you all want to put in an Ask PGCC ticket um, for data reporting is the title, I guess, if you find it in there, <laughs> um, okay. we can certainly, you know, work out what that looks like in the timeline and, and all that. Um, okay. And I, I also work uh, very, very closely with, I'm like the, the, the Ray liaison, so to speak, for program review. And okay. my understanding is that within the next year or so, Gen Gen is going to go under program review. That's what we're all hoping works essentially before middle states comes in. And then the umbrella, um, the umbrella degrees, we're thinking early in the next five year cycle because they're so new. And, and as you said, so small, there's a lot to still figure out with them. Um, but one of the things in the early days that I think will help with that is Ray right now is doing a lot of work looking at program and how it's listed on student uh, records in Colleague. And for example, I think there are a lot of people who are both enrolled in the Gen Gen as well as the Psych AA or the, you know, they, they have the general and the specific still both active in I Colleague. See. And so... I think that one of the things that your committee can talk about as they're going through how you want to look at the funnels for this is also what would the business processes look like when a student decides, okay, I'm coming in as general. Well, now I've chosen my umbrella or I've chosen my specific. 
do we then cut off? You know, do we do we end the general to begin the next one? Are they still both there? You know, if for the students who currently have both of them on their record, what would we consider to be their primary? primary. What yeah. might that look like? You know, so we're we're doing this for all programs right now. We're trying to get that data integrity piece together, but general studies, because it is such a big in highly enrolled program is where a lot of these kind of crossovers happen. So we- I'm um, Sharon. We have, yes. Sharon. Yeah. Hi, this is Karen Burks. Um, I agree with you. There are a lot of students that have the doubles, but I know the admissions office has been trying to clean that up in Colleague because the students should only have one program. So they shouldn't have a general studies and then a psychology or any other program. So I think, um, Admissions is trying to clean that up also. Mm -hmm. yes. It should only be it should only be one program. Yeah, and we're working with the registrar's office too and the admission. We're, yeah. we're kind of bringing everybody in, but I did just want to say that the once we get that piece cleaned up of, of the current kind of students, once that process is done, it's still important if you all are putting together where where these students go in their path, what that business process looks like so that admissions knows exactly, you know, once this one ends, this one begins and that sort of thing right. will be great to consider because people have different opinions about how that should go. And so, uh, you know, as we're moving forward, we will definitely reach out to your committee to have someone in the room as part of that conversation. Um, but I just wanted to put it on your radar as something to think about also from, the general business sort of standpoint and the student standpoint, but also from the program review down the line uh, standpoint, so we can track the students and see where they specifically come from and where they go. Sherry, thank you so much. I, I just read a chat from the technician that they need the room. I didn't realize okay. that, <laughs> but thank you so much. I will be yeah. reaching out to you and I, I, I'm really glad that you uh, joined us today. And thank you so much for your help. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'll be talking with you soon, I'm sure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.